Long as I wake up in the morning, I'ma get a bag. Get a bag, yeah, I'ma get a bag. Long as I wake up in the morning, I'ma get a bag. Get a bag, yeah, I'ma get a bag. Hello, fellas. Hey, hello up, out there. How is everybody doing tonight? And welcome to another episode of Sports Bites. Sports Bites, we are your self-proclaimed number one sports podcast, bringing you the best of both worlds, sports and snacks. I'm your host, Randall Horn. Tonight, on the mics, got our good friends, Robert Bialik. Robert, how you doing tonight, buddy? Doing good. Good, good to be here. Good to see you, good man. Here. On our other mic, you know the guy, Dr. Mike. Dr. Mike on the mic. What's Brent up? Brett Turner. How you doing tonight, Brent? What's up, Randy? Good seeing you. Glad you're well. Hey, I appreciate it. Welcome back it. to Absolutely. the land of the living. Welcome all of you back as well. We are so glad that you're here tonight yeah, watching with us. We truly did. We truly yep. missed all of y'all. Super devastated that we couldn't bring you an episode last week. Um, that just means this week's episode is going to be twice as good. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Good to see you're doing better, Randy. I, I appreciate it. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, rough week. Touch and go there for a little while, but it's all right, you know. <laughs> Feel better now. Lost a little weight in the process. You know, I'm feeling good. All right. Feeling light on my toes. <laughs> Nothing like that flu diet. <laughs> <laughs> I needed, I had 10 pounds I needed to lose, and I didn't have to hit That's the gym, way. so. That's one way to do it. Yep. So, you know, I just didn't eat. That's it, you know. Mm. <laughs> well, tonight we've got a great episode. You know, I feel like one week, and I feel like we've been gone for a month. Like, I feel like it's been fun. I'm glad to be something. back. Oh, yeah, 100%. For sure. Absolutely. Well, I think it has been a month for me. So. <laughs> right. Okay. Robert's like, yeah, you know, that's, that's about right. That's about a month. <laughs> well, tonight we've got a great episode for you. Uh, we've got all kinds of amazing things happening. First off, you know, we've got our director of snack content hooking us up tonight, uh, getting in touch with our great friend, Rob, from Big Daddy's Munchies. Brent, you want to hit on this Yes, for a minute? another get- week of some more delicious snacks. From Big Daddy's Munchies, thank you, Rob, again for hooking us up and taking time out of your day to come meet me and give me these snacks, and I, I'm i pumped. Yeah. So this week, um, we've got all chocolate. Yes. Last time, we did all fruit. Yep. And uh, we were going back and forth, and Rob said, well, I've got chocolate, if you're interested, and of course, and I don't, I'm interested. I don't know about you, but you guys know what chocolate's great for, right? Among, among many other things, Easter exactly. Oh yeah, 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 Easter yeah. coming Absolutely. up. Yeah, oh yeah. And this, I oh, feel you like you're kidding with that. Oh, uh, <laughs> no, I, I mean, mean there's not all good things. things. There's I thought that you were playing. For. <laughs> but yes, we've got Easter coming up, and everything that I'm seeing here before we try it, everything looks like it would be some amazing Easter basket goodies. Yes. So before we throw this out there and get started on this, I want to shout out to all of you guys if you're looking for those last-minute Easter ideas to stuff some baskets with. Uh, Big Daddy Munchies, check them out. Website's going to be right here for you. Check them out. Yeah, Go you, look at everything this, they got. If you I were a kid it. and the Easter Bunny brought me oh, these, bro. I am pumped. And uh, these fit perfect in a basket. Too. Exactly, yes. Yeah, all right. So are we ready to try some? I'm ready. I'm ready. All well, right. Well, with that, again, I, I do want to say one more time. I don't mean to cut you no, off. No, you're fine. I do just want to say... Thank you guys so much for being here and watching this episode. We truly did miss you. We say it all the time. We do it for y'all. Y'all are what we do this for. We love you, and thank you so much for sticking with us through our week off of flu turmoil, um, and hopefully we don't have to run into that again anytime in the near future. Hopefully um, not. <laughs> well, well said, me. Randall. I'm hopefully glad not. to be back, too. Yes. I'm ready to eat some snacks. Well, All right, which one do you want to work your I'll way down? I'll man. Let's see what right. you got. So the first one we have here are Nutty Bites. Now, um, here on Sports Bites, we like to be very thorough with our snacks. So I went and like, just kind of took a small sample of some of these just so I could try to identify what candy. That's why. Were. <laughs> right, research, research, <laughs> yep. research. Um, so these are Nutty Bites. And through my research, I may have discovered that these may or may not be Snickers. That's okay. my guess. Okay. So, But I don't know. If uh, you Let's have a guess, see what we got. Let's see. Now I love a good Snickers. It's All my right, that's my favorite. All right. It looks like it could definitely be a Snickers. Mm. All right. Let's see what we got. Oh. <laughs> mm. That's really oh good. Oh my god. <laughs> that's like. 
Rob, you have outdone yourself again, my friend. Those are banging. Very good. All right. Oh, my God. Well, let's keep this train going. Are you ready for more Big Daddy's cookies? Or what do we got here? These are Cocoa Duds now. <laughs> I know what, <laughs> I know what duds are. Yeah. Dig in, buddy. Yep. These look, <laughs> they look like. I'm taking two. Like chicken nuggets or something. Right. Mm. Just melts away. Just melts Pretty away. Much. Those are banging. Also good. God. All right. Now, this one. Oh, are you kidding me? The caramel That's cookie amazing. bites. I could not get a pin on. I mean, there's lots of caramelly cookie type of candy bar things. I couldn't get a pin on it. You said you wanted to try them all. I did. And that. Mm. All right. Cocoa okay. Duds are going to be hard to beat. Not going to lie. Oh, okay. Well, I can tell you now. Mm -hmm. That little bit in there, that resembles what I would like to think is the cookie section of a Twix candy bar. Ah. Because I love a Twix candy bar. Woo! Those are good. Okay. I haven't had a bad thing to say yet. Truthfully, get that on the whole line. What do you think, Robert? Yeah, I, can, I think those flips. If we're wrong, let me know. All right, last two. I just... I... Rob, I just got to throw this out here. If you ever want, you know, to just come move into my house, man. Like, bring the freeze fryer. You, right. <laughs> I've got room for you. Bring I got a workshop. Dryer. Like, we, we can make this work, but my brother. Caramel bombs. Well, the the coating gives away what these may be. Those are caramel M&Ms. Yeah, they're, they're looking like caramel M&Ms. Let's see. We got to get Rachel to try some of these, because I think last time around she was like, you've got to do chocolate. And now she's not here to try any. So. <laughs> okay. I think those are really good. Yeah. All right, last one. Now, uh, I may have changed my opinion, but through my research, I determined that this one might be my favorite. Now, this is not a very... These are called Charleston Bites, and it's not a very well-regarded candy, but everybody, I think, knows what a Charleston Chew is, right? Charleston Chew is one of my like favorites. On, it's not the one of the ones you think of. I, I think like the, this I, brings Charleston Chew Charleston Chews back to the front of the room. Be careful, though, because Eminem will choke you to death. <laughs> Yes, he will. <laughs> At least that's what I've heard. <laughs> yeah, those are great. I love those. I don't feel bad about eating a hundred of those. No, you will after you eat a hundred. Oh, that, well, that while I'm doing it, though, I'll feel. I'll, you know. Ooh, those are yummy. All right. Dang. I can't get over like that. The consistency is mm -hmm. like so ASMR like. It's it good. like just melts as you like bite into it. It just good description. I like those a lot. Oh my those God. are good. Okay, we'll save our rankings for the end. But I think Rob, you knocked this out of the park again. Thank you so much, Big Daddy's Munchies, for bringing, hooking us up, bringing these treats in. I think and, I've got uh, a tear in my eye, man. Easter, that was just Easter's beautiful. this Sunday. <laughs> uh, you can hit up his website if you want to order. BigDaddy'sMunchies.com. Yep. Rob, thank you again. We're hooking us up. We're looking forward to collaborating. Any, anything you want to send over. <laughs> like, I'll eat some freeze-dried vegetables just so I can say I did something good. Right, right. Like, Healthy free, vegetables are never... Just freeze-dry it, send it on over, we'll try it. <laughs> Absolutely. Rob, you're the man. We just got to throw it out there. Rob has been awesome since the moment you got in touch with him. Like, it, it, Rob has just been just totally awesome about everything. Uh, his products are beyond amazing. We haven't had anything... The first thing that I can't say, like, I would love to keep on stock mm. at all times in my house. Right. Everything from Fruity Stuff Skittles, which they still, I still have been telling everybody, like, his freeze-dried uh, freeze uh, range, rain, rain, rainbow crunchy got it. Uh, are the best freeze-dried Skittles I've had They're out really of any good. company that I've had They're them from. They're really great. Rob's are the best. Um, yeah, I'm like, that's hard to follow up. I mean, we've got, I'm we've got plenty to follow I've up with. I've got a little bit but, of sugar rush now. Right? Yeah, I'm ready. I like, <laughs> you know, if, I will say this. If you uh, are feeling risky, you can go ahead and buy some other freeze-dried candy. But if you risk it, you might also gamble. Right? 
and let's talk about. I want to talk about like uh, that's a nice segue. I want to segue into Otani and gambling. Well, we're jumping right into Otani. Yes. Oh, no, wow. like no, this is how I feel. <laughs> I, that's, if you want to talk about it, you want to skip it. You let's to... let's hold off on. It. Let's hold off. I'm on, fired like, up about it. It's because, the sugar and, talking to me, and, and because I know that there's some like. It was like draft night. I feel like things are going to things Ooh. are happening right now as we're talking. But um, I do want to start off with March Madness. Oh, perfect. because yeah. honestly, March Madness, it's been crazy, and it hasn't been crazy at the same time. There's a lot of teams that were expected to win that did exactly what they were expected to do up till now. I think all the one seeds and the two seeds are all still yes. in the field. Yeah, I'd say it's been a very non-crazy. Pretty chalky. Yeah. Now the games have been have been really good. There's I've been watched some, a few. There have been so some really far. good, entertaining games. Absolutely, uh, a few upsets. Yep. Um, you had Oakland beating Kentucky. Probably the upset. Of the, That's probably the which, upset of the first round, just because it's another chapter in the failure of Kentucky in the postseason. And which I had Kentucky in my Final Four. Me I too. really did. They they were they were they had a strong season. They got several guys on their team. That will probably get drafted by the NBA, who they are just do. very super talented team, and just the fact that they can't take all that talent and put it together in March, it's just another year where they lose to a double digit seed, and it makes you question what Calipari's doing down there. I was going to well, say he's it, questioning. It. Yeah, he's and, he's questioning his own strategy. He yeah. said, well, you know, maybe we can't do this with freshmen every year. Yeah, big blue nation. They get into very the tournament every year, and the freshmen look like freshmen. Yeah, yeah. They they're, could, they're, making, they're good players, missing but... like just basic basketball IQ type stuff. Just they don't play any defense. They just think that they can go win on talented alone. Yeah, and they go and play this team that you look at their name, you're like Oakland. I don't even know where that is. They're going to lose to Kentucky because they're it's just going to out. Yeah, I know where I know where it is, but people don't fill out the bracket don't. And they say, oh, well, they're just going to outclass them with their athleticism. And, and, and the, it never works out. Yeah. Well, Oakland Oakland outshined them big time. Oakland shot almost 50% from three in that game. Well, they, Golke drained 10 threes. Yeah. Golke, <laughs> all that guy does is shoot three. I think he had four two-point field goal attempts. Like, less than 10 field goal. It was two point field, Two point field all goal season. all season. Mm-hmm. So, all he does is shoot All three season, three. he attempted eight two-point Shots. Yeah. I mean, I guess if you got a skill, you drive with it, right? Yeah. Like So, I mean, the, the game was, on, on the stat sheet, is relatively close. Like, most of the stats, pretty close. Um, turnovers, Kentucky had four more turnovers. That's not really, you can win a game still by only being up or down four turnovers. Like, but the three-pointers, man, that was glaring The issue isn't that they lost the game where the stats were close. The issue is that the stats were close. Yeah. 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 The, the stats shouldn't be close in that game. They should have handled. Yeah, you let a guy get 10 threes on you, you're probably going to lose the game. Yeah. Right. Most definitely. And, like, the the next game, he didn't have, shoot near as well from three. Yeah. You know, one of the reasons why, NC State had a hand in his face. Yep. The darling of the tournament so far. Yep. NC State making the ACC and has represented acquitted themselves well this tournament. Absolutely. I think they're outside eight, of one team. Outside of one team, which is UVA, so that makes me feel good. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the ACC, for as much crap as they've caught, has had a... But it's like that every year. Every year yeah. it seems like that's the narrative going into the tournament. The AC, like, ACC's weak, ACC's weak, but every year the ACC has yeah. teams that go on to the Sweet 16. Yeah, Absolutely. And, but let's not forget also, in that game, Oakland still, they took them to overtime. Now, mm-hmm. NC State, once overtime hit NC State, it looked like they were like, okay, we've got another gear we can still go to. You guys, when you usually, guys are maxed out. Um, usually when you get into overtime in like college, the better team, sh- it, it shows yeah. in overtime. And it did. It and definitely it did. did. Um, I know that watching the end of that game, as the timer was was ticking down, was like it. There for a moment, it did look like Oakland is walking away with this one too. Um, NC State, I feel like, yeah, they they pulled it together <laughs> at that moment where they probably got to the bench. The coach was like, "Look, if you guys don't want to be here, then we'll go home." But this is the time right now. If you're going to do it, 
Scott Keats, uh, coach for NC State, he went from being possibly fired, and now he's maybe an extent. He got mm-hmm. it, so he had a clause in his contract that if he won the ACC tournament, he got an automatic two-year extension. So he was literally coaching for his job. Yeah, in the ACC tournament, and he won it. So congrats well, to them. And that says something about the players buying into his system is they wanted it too. If if the players don't like you as a coach, the players are going to know that's part they of They can it. rally around big number 30 down there in the post. Yeah. Your boy. DJ Horn, baby. Yes. Chance for fame with the same last name. <laughs> oh, man. But, but yeah, but... the tournament's been wild. We got JMU up the road, yep. taking it to Wisconsin. You know, yeah. They had a good, JMU had a good season. Um. Who else? We had a great double overtime game of, uh, I think it was Creighton and Oregon. Yeah. It was just, um, you had Texas A&M the yep. other night oh. coming back within the last few minutes to tie it up with uh, Houston. They eventually lost, but there was just there was a lot of blowouts. And Oregon yeah. beating South Carolina to get to that Creighton game. Yeah, so there's just lots of, it, it, it was an entertaining first round. Did it have as much, you know, drama? There was no 16 beating a one. No. There was no 15 beating a two. No um, real, real Cinderella. You had the Grand. Yeah. I think Grand Canyon got a win. Um, Yale beat Auburn. Yeah. So there were there were some you know double digit seeds that won in the first round. Yeah, but then they have a, a bad habit of getting waxed in the second round. Yeah. So that's why you got a lot of ones and twos still s- sitting there. What's your last big Cinderella story you really rooted for? <sighs> oh, UMBC. UMBC. That made me. Feel uh, yeah, they'd be, they'd be the, uh, yeah. <laughs> the last one, but did, did it have to go far? Could it have died in the first round? Because well, that wouldn't really be a Cinderella. Uh, yeah, you're right. Died um, in the first round. I don't watch a ton of basketball, and I, I think we've been pretty clear. Like I, I like March Madness. Like I'll, I'll stick around and watch March Madness. I think the most entertaining Cinderella story I remember was probably Butler and Duke. Um. Oh yeah, Butler coming. I'd like that was a if great. You, if you roll back the clock, the one though I think I was really super invested in was probably George Mason back in the day. Yeah, that's true. That was yeah. a, they made it to the Final Four, which was wild. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, and I'm yeah, like George Mason was probably that was that was BCU was another one. You look at it on here. The only I mean, you, you don't really to me you don't consider a six or a five even. Really, a Cinderella no, story. No. So you really they don't be at least have a any, double digits. Yeah, seed. exactly. So you really don't have that. I don't even know if Butler was that year that they played Duke. They were a low C, but I don't know if they were double digits. No, they weren't double digits. They were a good team. I think they had Hayward, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Gordon Hayward on. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So and he it, still almost drained that the, shot at the buzzer. I know from he like, did. Golly, the madness <laughs> isn't over yet, though. Rain. We still got our Sweet Sixteen. Oh, there's no. some yeah. really good-looking matchups. I think there's Alabama, North Carolina, take the over. Just, just take the over, whatever it is. It's going to be like 170. Just go ahead and take that. Yeah, Alabama doesn't play defense. Uh, Clemson yeah. coming out of the ACC playing well. I think they got a Sweet 16 matchup. So who are they playing, Randall? We got Clemson pulled up. Yeah, so we've got Clemson uh, Clemson over Baylor. Clemson um, to Baylor? So, oh, Clemson. Yeah, Clemson beat Baylor. Yeah. yeah so, who are they playing now? Uh, they've got Arizona Ooh. in the in the elite right now. Um, that'll be on the 30th. On the Sweet 16. Oh, yeah. They've got Arizona in the Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What the heck? Technical difficulties. Yeah, technical difficulties. Y'all go ahead. Oh, so yeah, I'm <laughs> saying. I'm looking forward to Sweet 16, man. I think it's going to be entertaining, like watching all these top seeds play each other. Uh, I guess I, I don't know who I'd. My bracket is dead, so it doesn't matter. Who I like. I just think the team out of those sixteen that's been the most dominant is probably UConn. They've just I think they've looked shown dominant. That they've, they're the best team in the country this year. That doesn't mean they're going to win at all. No, of them, they, yeah, I mean, but they just, I think they are the best team. They haven't cracked a bit. That's so. who I picked. Yeah. I, I I've got them beating Tennessee in the championship. Sorry, I got it fixed. Tough. Technical difficulty. No fixed. problem. You know, we're getting we're getting we're just used kinda, to the new technology. We're just kind of talking about Sweet Sixteen. You like who yeah. we like is the in the natty. So, you know, um, it's it's all gonna we're gonna have our final four by the end of the weekend. And I guess realistically, NC State, yeah, is still you know they do still have the chance at that Cinderella story. I didn't realize quite honestly. I didn't realize NC State was double digit. I thought that they were a little bit higher. I thought they were like a nine seed. Um, so 
yeah, seeing that, there's there's still definitely the opportunity for a lot of action in this. Who do they play next? Uh, NC State. They're playing uh, Marquette. Winnable. Winnable. It is. It is. Marquette's been a little up and down. And winner of that game will play either Houston. winner of Houston Duke. Ugh. That may be, be if you make it, it past Marquette. That's where that's, it ends. Yeah, I think that's where that that road probably. Either one, I think. Either. Yeah, that's if you make it past Marquette to begin with. Like, right. I yeah. mean, they're, yeah, like they're I said, they're, they're, for they're, a they're, 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 they've been in inconsistent this year. I I like Houston to win that matchup. I like Houston. I like their defense. If their offense doesn't show up, it's, it's a, they'll be in a grinder. But if they can hit their shots, that they're very well deserved. I had Kentucky seed. in that bracket. Did you? Well, so here's the next question I've got for you guys. Out of all of these teams that are still uh, that are still in, still fighting for mm-hmm. it, does anybody really have anything for UConn? That I mean, question if you, gets asked a lot. It just there's always it, it just there's, depends there's, on what UConn shows up. If you get it, their kids, Marquette they're, earlier in the year kicked their ass, but if they show up with their A plus game, which the last two tournaments they've proven they can do mm-hmm. in the Big East tournament, they show they can do that. If they show up and play their game, they are going to win. That's yeah. what the beauty of the that makes it March Madness. It's one and done. It's it one just game. takes yeah. one game. Yeah, so, one bad yeah. game. Anybody could have something for UConn on any given night. Now, if this was a seven-game series tournament, I, I'll take UConn. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, but, and I still am taking UConn. But of course, anything can happen to anybody on any man. given night. I'm, I'm, I'm pumped to see how it plays out, man. I really am. San Diego State worth a fiver in that game? Is it worth a fiver? Yes. They were in the Final Four last year. I'm they're saying a it, good team. It's worth, it's worth a Will fiver. they? Do yeah. I think they're going to win? No. No. But, you know, but it's that's a five or not a fifty. Possible. So I mean, you know, if, it's a, if, if, a if what are the odds on it? Uh, odds on that game as of right now, probably plus three. <laughs> plus, plus plus three, three is that what you said? Plus three four hundred. Let's see for what as money line. What San Diego State? Oh, that's the next game. For them, <sighs> yeah, UConn and San Diego State. Uh, that's going to be right now. Money line on that game is going to be plus four fifty for San Diego State. Yeah, I mean, that's, sprinkle. Yeah, yeah, it's worth a little sprinkle. Yeah, absolutely. Couldn't hurt. Um, pushing like, a spread, saying, at, yeah, pushing like a spread at eleven over under right 136. now. Actually, <laughs> that's actually that whole line all the way through there is not bad. <laughs> oh goodness gracious! Yeah, I mean, the NC State game. NC State's only plus two twenty. So Vegas, we'll see, dude. Like Vegas that's what I'm saying. You've got a, a, a lot of the crappy teams have left. Yeah, it's going to be a good. Good weekend of basketball. Illinois, Iowa State. We haven't really said anything. I mean, those are still two good teams. Like two yeah. good teams. Two and a three. Um, pass. Pass on both. Pass. Um, I'm not yeah, I, I think Duquesne wasn't really doing. that strong. Obviously, uh, Moorhead, Illinois walked through them. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the I don't think it ma- I don't. That's another bracket that I don't think matters. I think there's two teams. That. I think there's two teams out there that really like if. If they both play their A, a game, like if they play a really great game, and maybe UConn sits the shade off, I think UNC or Tennessee would really give them a run for their money. I've got I UNC. like the way Tennessee can score. If they can get some turnovers and play a little bit of defense. Tennessee they, could for they sure can score win the ball. Yeah. UNC could win well, the ball. Well, I've got UNC I think Arizona going. Could win. I, I think any of the Houston or could win it. I could see Houston winning it all. I could see Duke winning it all. I could uh, see. I don't. Um, I could see Duke winning it all just because. I don't want to see that. Duke. Yeah, I mean, um, I had my final four. Uh, Honestly, I could see Purdue winning it all. Everyone, it, uh, it'd be like uh, it's like UVA. UVA. Yeah, I've got. UNC, Kentucky, Tennessee, and UConn was my final four pick, and I had Tennessee, UNC, UNC winning it all. So, yeah, like I said, those are two really great teams. 
Uh, but like we said, if UConn <laughs> comes and plays an A plus, they're not going to win. Yeah, yeah. And that's you know, you guys hit it though perfectly. Is like any of these teams really one off game. That's all it takes. One off game. Every possession is amplified. Every turnover is absolutely. amplified. Everything absolutely. is like if you if you go cold for five minutes, it could change the whole tide of the game. So yes. It's about consistency, and that's why I like UConn, because they're just consistently good. Well, and that's why I like March Madness, because it, it does. It, it puts the level up of everything. Everything matters more. So it, it is madness. It's Ooh. craziness. <laughs> so you heard my final four. What, what do y'all got? Robert, who's your final four right now? Um, well, I'm going to stick UConn, Tennessee in the finals. They were my final four. I had Arizona, and okay. I guess I'm gonna roll with Houston coming out. Of I like it. Now. Okay, I like it. That would be a. I feel like that'd be an enter- entertaining Final Four. I think I would concur with Robert. He's probably right on all of those. Yeah. Like I said, Houston's got a great defense. If they can, if they can cl- put the clamps on you and hit their shots, they're just as good as anybody. So I think that would be a pretty entertaining Final Four. I think it. I. I, I 100% agree. Um, I'd like to see North Carolina win it all just because I don't. I don't Get the fuck out of here. I don't, no, I don't, no, 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 no. I don't do basketball because, so I'm like. I don't no, do UNC. I don't do basketball, so, but I don't like Duke. I don't like Duke. Colby ruined. I don't like ruined, one of them. Nah, don't, I don't mind UNC near as much as, as Duke. Me either. <laughs> me either. <laughs> They're both. But the I. Bottom. No. <laughs> If I had to choose between the two, sure, UNC, <laughs> but you're never going to hear me say, I hope UNC wins at yeah, all. Yeah, it's like, would year. you rather get punched in the face or kicked in the nuts? It's like, neither. <laughs> <laughs> neither one. <laughs> <laughs> well, that being said, I only say it because I never get brackets right. And, yeah, Kentucky got shit on early and bumped out. But it would be nice to call the Have you ever gotten your once. whole Final Four right? No. Have you? No. I've gotten three out of the four. Yeah, I've gotten the whole final four right. I got the finals right. I lost because which game was it? So did my dad. He picked the final four, and he picked the finals, and we picked the opposite teams to oh, win it, came, it all. Oh, your brackets came down to different teams, and uh, it came down to the finals. And it was the year <laughs> that Florida beat Ohio State. Greg Oden uh, and Greg Oden. Mike, Mike Conley. <laughs> I had Ohio State winning it all, and my dad had Florida. The other teams in the Final Four that year were... Is that 08? 08 Florida? So. I think so. Yeah, because they won back-to-back 07, 08. The other two teams that year, if I remember correctly, were Georgetown and UCLA. And we both... I didn't see the brackets, each other's brackets, we both picked the same Final Four, same finals, but he picked Florida, and what he told me after I looked, I was like, we picked the same final, you picked Florida. He goes, yeah, they're an NBA team going up against a college team. I think Al Horford was on that team, Joachim Noah was on that team. Their entire starting lineup was ended up being uh, Corey Brewer. Yeah. I know a little Gators basketball. (laughs) Who was, uh, who was the white guy? The shot the threes, and he had like a Lee. Was it David? I don't know. David Lee or something. That sounds. That sounds white. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. That was the only. That's the best year I. That's the best year I ever did. Oh, Uh, golly. And I still lost. Yeah, that's well, that sucks. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, at least it was your dad. Three out of four. No. No? That made it worse? Yeah, yeah he's bragging. Lose to he's him. bragging rights forever. Forever, though? If I not was, forever. My, yeah. dad, my dad doesn't remember it. Like, oh. he, like <laughs> he, he didn't care. He didn't I was care. like, my dad doesn't remember it. But I do. <laughs> but I, I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that it's going to be, yeah, a very interesting Sweet 16. Um, I, I think, I think a lot. It'll be like the tournament so far. I think it'll be a lot of the same. 
you're going to see a lot of teams that are expected to win win. You might see one or two here or there that. I just want to see some good yeah, basketball. All, yeah, yeah, well, and, yeah exactly, I just want to see some exactly. good, close, competitive games. We didn't have a lot of those. Let's, let's see some high-level college basketball. I'm looking forward to it, man. And I think the closer we get to the finals, you're going to see a lot more of that. Usually you're, do. Yeah, you're going to see a lot more of those tight games, maybe a little overtime here or there. You're, yeah, you're not going to see. It's usually not the madness as you get towards the end. Mm-hmm. Like, I guess this weekend you still high see pressure, some of the madness. High stakes, yeah. Still, yeah. Next weekend, though, it's... It's not really the it's not the same. It's crazy when you think about it. You know, the entire season, everything, the whole season you've had culminates to one thing, and then on the flip side of basketball, nearing the end of their season, we've got Major League Baseball beginning their season. Let's go! Oh, baseball starting now that we're starting baseball, <laughs> Randy. Now I remember why I was so antsy to start our baseball segment. Yeah. I've got a surprise. What do we got? All right, so if you haven't noticed, audience, gentlemen, I'm wearing my nice Big League 2 shirt. Well, if we're going to talk baseball. You need to get up in front of the camera for a second and give, give, give a little shout to oh, the yeah, shirt. Oh, yeah, sorry, the yeah. The shirt is epic, people. I don't know if shirt. you can actually see this, but you, this shirt is one of the greatest yeah. shirts I've ever seen in my so life. I, let's all throw a dip in and talk some baseball. What do you want? Oh, Strawberry, snap. sour apple, or OG? OG. OG all day. There you are, sir. Before we get started, we got we got to throw a dip in. Feel like the Sandlot. Oh yeah. Shaw. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Bam. There we go, boys. Mm. <laughs> Whoa! I took way too much. <laughs> <laughs> Can you really have too much? I'm gonna have to spit this out at some point. It's too hard to talk. Yeah, how but, old? How old are these? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I got from the store because the bag just kind of <laughs> shredded. <laughs> I'm digging it. You gotta, you gotta lip it for the first couple minutes, then you can start chewing on it. All right, boys. All right. <laughs> you all ready? Major League Baseball. I'm ready. Let's start this thing off. Somebody pick a division. That's the easiest way to do this. Somebody pick a division and let's start rolling with it. AL East. The AL East. This was a, this was funny because I was showing Brent earlier. So I got Vegas odds through four different sports books. DraftKings and FanDuel are one of the only ones that I see differing. FanDuel has the Yankees preseason favorites take the division. DraftKings is uh, Orioles and Yankees are dead dead center with each other, tied 185 plus 185 for both. Let's talk about the Orioles. Okay. <laughs> Big Orioles fan, obviously. Highs and lows in the preseason so far. Spring training. Not many lows. No. Can't think of any. No? Weren't you texting me something the other day about it? Maybe not. That they were crushing? Huh? That they were crushing because their farm system's good? That's probably what he texted you. Jackson Holiday, maybe? That might have... Well, you texted me about Jackson Holiday. You texted the group about it. But you texted something about somebody who was hurt early. You were worried about it, which they ended up not being... Somebody got hurt from y'all earlier in spring training, I thought. Kyle Bradish. No, I think that's what it was. Yeah, he opened spring training on IL. He's not. He's not feeling. Just not. He's not. Well, I I don't know how long he's going to be out. They haven't really disclosed too much. But you're not worried that much about it. It's a little worrisome. Yeah. But a little less worrisome since they got Corbin Burns. Because mm-hmm. at least they have an ace. Bona fide. It's the first time the Orioles can say they had like a well regarded, bona fide ace since in their casino. Yeah. That was the mid 90s. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um. 
Orioles are going to be good, man. They're going to score a ton of runs. Mm-hmm. They finally got some pitching. That's my thing is, I feel like you guys have really set yourselves up for good pitching this year. And they got young pitching, too, not just Corbin Burns. I think you're going to be a very good team this year. Super I think good. so. I think so. Um, if you would have asked me if about a month ago who's going to win the division, I would have said the Yankees. With Cole, with Garrett Cole. He's hurt, right? Mm-hmm. He is, and I'm not sure exactly how long he's going to be out. It sounds like it could be for a little while. I say it'll be it'll be a decent amount of time. I think that changes things a lot. Yeah. You can't win a division in April, but you can lose it. Mm-hmm. You can. Absolutely. If you have a bad April and with Garrett Cole out. Um, especially if you're a team that has another team that is expected to be neck and neck with you. You don't want to give them an inch. And so. Now, I will say I don't. Yankees had, a, I mean, a good, I guess, Good by their terms. What they normally do is buy a bunch of players. Mm-hmm. So the Yankees had a decent offseason as far as acquiring players. Yeah. Now a team that's been very um, popular over the past few years, but people have kind of felt fell off of them now is Toronto. Mm-hmm. They're still good. Mm-hmm. They've got a good core of players. They could win the division. Yeah. Very easily. Um, I, too many people are counting them out. It's not a two way. It's not a two team race. The AL East, you never, you never know. Yeah, well, and the Rays still got the Rays always. In. Exactly, and I was going to say, look at last year. The season started, and they were one of the hottest teams in baseball out of the gate. Um, I mean, as of right now. Out of the five teams in the AL East, only one team is plus four digits on odds. <laughs> you got one? No, but you can use it if you need it. <laughs> you spend out your chaw? Yeah. There. Why? There's too much, man. <laughs> I can't be doing too much. I'm right there with you. I feel like I'm chomping right in the mm-hmm. microphone. just like, it tastes so good, but... Yeah, well... like that. What's that? Too much. Minor league. I appreciate it, though. Not minor league. Uh, major league. The, the kid, Henry Rowe Gardner. Rookie of the Rookie year. Rookie of the year. Yeah. The, 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 the guy who chews the gun, Daniel Stern. He plays the equipment manager. Plus that pepper. Hot ice. It's hot ice. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I just heat up. <laughs> you take the ice and you heat it up. That's it's the, the best of both worlds. <laughs> That's the guy. <laughs> Okay, what were we but talking I about there? Um, the uh, the Blue Jays, they if, but, and, and then, the and then you mentioned every team, the Red Sox who were in the basement. But if I'm picking one team to win the division, I guess I'm going Orioles. Nice. Um, the Garrett Cole being out really changed things. Now, the thing that scares me with the Orioles this year that I is no Batista. Batista was the reason we were where we were last year. Yeah. Uh, we, y'all talk about the Rays start that they had where it was like this record start. Yeah. He was the closer, right? Didn't he, uh, Tommy John? Yeah. Where they were, they off to a great start. I don't think that we ever got um, farther than like 10 games behind the Rays at yeah. any point in the season. So we were right there. We, like we we started off really well. We we stayed within striking distance, mm-hmm. and then once they came down to earth and started playing like a, a human baseball team, <laughs> we were able to catch them. And Batista was a huge part of that. We yeah. had a lot of close games that he closed out because he's almost impossible to hit. It's it's insane. So are we going to miss that this year? Yes, because. Yeah. Craig Kimbrell is not Batista. I only say this because we're friends. Robert. And I hate that. We, Don't do that. I hate that. We, we watched and talked <laughs> baseball a lot last year. I got to say, I love seeing the difference in confidence that you have in your team this year going into the beginning of the season. Because last year, I mean, you even said it last year, like, hey, like we could do good, but I don't have the highest expectations right now. I think it's the most as as I lived up in Baltimore for in the Baltimore area for a while. It's probably the most optimistic this fan base has been about the baseball team in a very long time. Well, how can yeah. you not? Yeah, yeah. And they just, have you, the you best have, 
farm system in the league to where they have so many players in the minors that are already ready to play in the majors. There's no room for them. We have so many good young players. And now we have an owner that looks like he's going to be willing to spend money on top of that. So we might be able to keep some of these young players in Baltimore instead of them leaving like Machado. <sighs> yep. Well, it, I will say this. Oh, Wait. and by rest in peace, Peter Angelos. Former Orioles. Well, he technically still is the owner. Yeah. I will say the Yankees Garrett is going to hurt them a lot. I also will say I have a feeling, and it's just a feeling. I don't think Soto is as a, as productive in New York as what they expected him to be and pay are paying him. To be. I think you. I, you I think you will? Yeah. I just I. The one that does the signing that didn't make as much sense to me was Stroman. <laughs> <laughs> I like. I I think he's a good pitcher. I like. I think he is sensitive as hell, mm-hmm. and he is white. And he is combative. He's played in a bunch of... He's a good pitcher, but he's played for a, four or five teams in a short amount of time. And it's, and he's lashed out at fans and every backlash and stuff at every place that he's been. Mm-hmm. New York is not the place to Oh, go no. If yeah. you are a sensitive... I think player. that's what... I think so that's going to Soto, It's too. only going to yeah. take... 100%. It's only going to take one bad outing. He will catch hell. Fans will give him some crap. They'll say some stuff, and he's going to get sensitive, and he's going to lash back out, and it's going to the the relationship between the city and Stroman will be ruined pretty yeah. quickly. Yeah, I can see that one hundred percent. But I, I Soto short porch, right? Yeah, I He'll rake. like you said. You know, a guy who's played for four or five teams. I mean, let's not forget Soto's played for three teams in the course of what three years. Let's not forget Washington, then Juan to Soto San Diego, San Diego. and he was just a rental player basically in San Diego. Which is, let's not forget Juan Soto mm-hmm. is younger than Adley Rutsch. Yep. Yep. True. Crazy. Makes no sense. I know. <laughs> when gonna when be he good. told me on the phone the other night when we were talking about it, I'm like, no, that, hold on, yeah. that's wrong, and I'm looking it up. I'm like, that's not. That. I like Rutsch, man. He's gonna be good. Yeah. I like him and Gunner for the O's. They could they could very well both either one of them win AL MVP. Mm-hmm. I don't doubt it. They uh, might take votes away. From I think each other. now. Hold on, I'm wearing the Red Sox hat. Let me give like just two seconds on the Red Sox. Oh no, I wasn't That's switching off yet. Yeah, <laughs> I actually had a question for you for the Red we're, we're, Sox. We're rebuilding. We've cut some salary. We've got a few good guys. Cut some do. salary. You guys haven't had salary like uh, yeah. Orioles we, we, don't okay. spend. That's what we do. But you guys are supposed to spend, and you have, you don't you're, spend. You're right, I know. But we got the new uh, GM Breslow in. Let's see if he can sort things out. I I think we've got a few good guys at the top of the lineup that can do a little bit, but the rest is just a lot of unknowns, a lot of young guys. You we, do have we, we and we've got a decent farm system. It's just it's just all we're like the Orioles two years ago. Where you got that? I I think we're not going to be very good. We did we like we took a team last year that was below five hundred and we made it worse. You still you have a Raphael Devers. The (laughs) Orioles from three years ago did. I mean, so yeah, like I like like I said, like you have a the top of our lineup is good because I like the way um, uh, Tristan Casas came out. He's a lead up fast guy. He's got a little bit of pop. I like Devers. I like. Uh, uh, Losing Verdugo though. That's... Verdugo, we turned to the Yankees, by the way. Ew. <laughs> he <laughs> but... looks pretty gross in the Yankees uniform. Okay. Because yeah, he had to shave. Yeah. But uh, we we still got the husk of Trevor Story playing shortstop. Like if he can stay healthy, he'll be good. Yeah. But he's just been injury plagued the last few years, and you just not. It's not the Trevor Story from Colorado. Yeah. Not at all. Not at all. Then we paid a, a lot of money for him. So like, I'm hoping. He can be the guy. Um, our, we've got a couple good pitchers, but like I said, we're just a very young team, I think, and we play in a really tough division. Mm-hmm. Everybody, you're telling me. Yeah, and like everybody's good. I know. You have a genie in a lamp. You get one thing 
one wish to change on your team to try to fix it. What's what's the big thing you change? Like a player? Anything. One big thing. We need better pitching. We need this I position think, filled better. We need this player okay. out of off of one team. I think I think that comes down to what the front office does. Mm -hmm. I want them to be aggressive. I want them to go spend some money and make some moves. Sitting on our hands in free agency and not doing anything. It's like we're Stop, trading stuff. guys away. And the, yeah, I know you can say that from a, the perspective of Orioles, but we're not we're not the Orioles. We're the freaking Red Sox. <laughs> okay? Yeah, you are. <laughs> yeah, I know. And it, just to sit on our hands and watch everybody do stuff yeah. What, like what it, I want to know, whatever their message is or their plan is to execute it fully. Genie comes out of the lamp. We get our good farm system up. We go spend some money on some really good players and field a competitive team in a competitive division mm -hmm. and be really good. Well, we've got a good. We've got the best ballpark in MLB to play at. People should want to come there, dude. Fenway, Fenway is it. I'm there are rookies who come to Fenway and like, I, it's not I the best I am interested to in go to watch. I was going to say, yeah. I am interested in seeing Camden this year, but I will say, yeah, I'm 100% biased, but out of the stadiums I've been to so far, uh, Truist Park is badass. It's a badass place to go to. Um, I will say Coors Field in Colorado was actually pretty cool. I was surprised at how cool that, that stadium was. Just saying. Red Sox, it's going to be a down year. Going to be a down year. It, it, it just is. Uh, if the young guys can get together, then we'll see. But yeah, I think it's going to be a lean year, but we will. This has gone on for a lot longer than just that. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, you know, I said, I'm wearing the hat. I'm wearing the hat. I got it. You're wearing a whole week's voice. No, we spent 10 minutes on the Orioles. Like, give me a second. <laughs> Well, well, they're, I'll they're tell finally you what. worth talking about, so shut the hell up. <laughs> um, I'll tell you what. Uh, if you guys want to spend two seconds on something, how about this? Let's talk about the AL Central. That's all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Um, I'm going to give the Guardians. You got no, the Guardians? No, uh, I, like, I like the Tigers. You like the Tigers. To so, win the division. Yeah, to win the division. Yeah. Um, as of right now, all four sports books have pretty, I mean, by two hundred by plus two hundred basically over any of the other teams, the Twins winning that division. They, I mean, they hit a lot they, of runs. They, they're a good team. They're the consistent. They're the consistent. Exactly, they're consistent and they're in a bad division. I I like I mean, uh, Royce Lewis. Yeah, the guy's good. He's on my fantasy team. I, he, you have to speak up, sir. The pop filters. <clears throat> fantasy team. He's on my fantasy <laughs> team. I almost. I was. I was. I think I was about to pick him up. Possibly. So I, it, it was in my queue. I was waiting, and you picked him up. Uh, I picked up a Twins pitcher. I know I got him on my fantasy team, but that's about all the Twins that I, I was like, ah. I saw Correa was, like, at the bottom of the list. Yeah. He really he went way late. I could not. Yeah, he went super late. I, uh, someone took him before I could, but I was like, I, has he, I don't keep up with Twins baseball. Sorry. I, I like, had shortstop <laughs> like, already filled out. By like, did wasn't. he fall off that bad? Was he hurt last year or something? I don't know. I, maybe it's just a projected thing. Like. He can go know. on the projections that much. Like, I think it was a pretty. I think it was a steal. Whoever got on that late. Yeah, yeah. Who you got in the West? The West. It's probably the Astros with the favorite. Well, of course, or the Rangers. They're the defending always. World Series champs. Yeah, but it's still it's they didn't the Astros even win the division the last year. Yeah, it's the Astros all the way through, and it's always the friggin' Astros in the friggin' West over there. And I, I think that I, I, I think it's BS because the Rangers. I think the Astros will probably win the division. I think my my sleeper, who I think could win, the, is Seattle. I like Seattle. I like Seattle. I do too. Yeah, Seattle team. has they a got lot of talent. Good pitching. They yeah. got the uh, Castillo, right? Luis really? Castillo. Oh yeah, George he's Kirby. Yeah, they've, they've got, got they've got good. They've got a good team. You got young guys like J. Rod, like yeah. Cal, they, Raleigh, Cal Raleigh. Yeah, he's man. A good, he's they a good have. They have a team built for not just one season, but for the future. Yep. Um, and I think that that, that really benefits them. Because eventually, I, I eventually the Astros are not going to be the team. They're not. They always seem to be I in it at the end. I don't see it happening this year, though. 
What, for the Astros to go? Right, for the Astros to not be. Oh, yeah, team. yeah. Like, it's, they, they're still it. Yeah, 100%. I mean, they, they, they have a ridiculous amount of talent all the way around. I, you know, I, don't, I just that, like Texas's lineup I just wanna, better. I'm I not, love Texas. I'm not I just want to shout out. Um, you know who helped build that talent in Houston? Oh, Mike Elias. Mike Elias, <laughs> GM for the Baltimore <laughs> Orioles. <laughs> yeah, I just tie it back into the Orioles. He is real quick. doing the same thing that they did in Houston. <laughs> but I'd like Texas's lineup better, dude. Um, Garcia is a mountain of a man. You got Seager, yeah. and I think I uh, I mentioned him before. Um, Simeon. Simeon. Dude, that's a that's a poet. But they're pitching the... this year. What, Kyle, what Kyle are they going to be always. this year? Because is They've Degrom got... going to pitch at all this year? Uh, I think is he Scherzer, will. Is he even on oh, the, for team? the Rangers? Is he pitching? Sorry, I thought you they, don't the Mon- second, I they don't have Jordan. They don't have Jordan Montgomery. Evaldi um, is he still down there? It's Evaldi. So w- w- the pitching, yeah, they hit. Through the playoffs, but their pitching was great. The but playoffs. I'm just saying, if they made a team in the playoffs, they can. I think they can make it to the playoffs. At least a while. When you say they're at least a wild card team, yeah, you would, yeah. yeah. But it's okay, also so baseball. Yeah, I understand. And things that. happen. Mm-hmm. Which and is, is what 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 you were saying earlier about my feelings about the Orioles this year compared to this year. Yes, I ha- there. I think that they should be good this year. Yeah. And I have hopes that they're going to be. Last year was a little different because I didn't feel like they were there yet. Now I know they're there to where they should. Yeah. But I also know that this is baseball and that's not guaranteed. So I know that they could, maybe not. Yeah. And it's a long season and a lot of things happen in 162 games. Yep. Injuries. It, yeah. Injuries, guys fall off. As I tell everybody, baseball, like people who don't watch baseball and they're like, you know, talking baseball, want to talk baseball. And I'm like, baseball is strictly, it is a game of streaks and slumps. That's all it is. You got guys who are going to streak, you maximize your streaks and you try to minimize your slumps. But you are, that's what it's going to be. You're going to streak, you're going to slump, and that's what it is. And a lot of times that makes or breaks. Dude, we went ice cold in the playoffs last year. Braves, everyone was like, oh, Braves are like such an all-star team. They got everything. Yeah, we had everything. Pitching went to the shitter at the end of the season. We had some injuries come through uh, in our in our bullpen, and then guys got ice cold in the playoffs. All it takes couldn't is hit. A, no, nothing. <laughs> like, couldn't hit. Nothing. Olsen, not a I damn think, thing. I think Olsen was terrible. Yeah, dude. Terrible. And Olsen, at one point, they were talking about he was up. He was in line, in and he was on par with beating Judge's home run record. Yeah, he was on par to beat that, and then ice cold. And Ace, that's how Ace fast it happens. Mad as hell. Oh, dude. <laughs> we we talked all about the AL East right now. That's the first time I mentioned the A's. And that's the only time I'm going to mention the A's. They're just well, pissed that Matt Olson plays for it. <laughs> I, I got to say, though, speaking of the A's, I've got the A's at plus 25,000 to, to win the division. Is that what it says? Is that worth a fiver? Do you feel like donating five bucks <laughs> to your sports book? It is. That's got to be the question yes, on this episode. But, yeah, it's got to no. be the question on this. And it's fine to say no. It is. Is, it, is it worth a fiver? No. No? No. 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 I'm cool with it. I, I mean, I put five on it. But... Five on it. I got five on it. Five to win. Uh, 1250 <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean... Yeah, you might. You got a better. You should just burn that five dollars. Yeah. <laughs> yes, would you? With with that five dollars, I could add another dollar to, and just go buy some Big Daddy's munchies. If that was A's to make the playoffs, maybe twenty five thousand to make the playoffs to maybe. win the division. There's no way. Yeah, Every so other team is division. way better than by a yeah. mile in that division. Hell. That's that would be like saying, "Hey, you want to sprinkle on the Red Sox to win the AL East?" <laughs> <Get off>. Damn. <laughs> I mean, the Red Sox are only going it's great, off man. It's at close. plus seventeen. You, you, you know what? That's fine. You got your shot. No, they spent years as the fucking doormat of the AL East. I know. Whenever we came to Baltimore, it was a sweep. We I know. Stomp their was. fucking skulls in. And now he's just he's sitting over there, just smug as hell, it was. just talking that smack. You know what? We are on the come up, and I can't wait. 
You're good. You know what? That I, hope y'all We're on the come <laughs> up. I hope y'all choke. I hope y'all choke. We are. You know what? We are. I like our new GM. I think we're going to do good. And you can, next year when we do this preview, you're going to sit there and talk about His how y'all choke. His name is not Mike Elias. Mark, mark it down, people. That means that means next year, Sports they, Bites they always, be here for the episode. They always do this to you. They always do this to you. They get you, get you hyped in the first half, and then they <coughs> choke in the second half. They never See, do this for you. to me. I That's feel like I that was the you. opposite last you're year. Because at the beginning, me. We, are, we are a pillar of MLB. You're just, ugh. At Baltimore. the beginning, even when Baltimore started doing good last year, I felt I still felt like you were that dude from uh, Major League. They're like, yeah, yeah. they'll blow it in they'll the playoffs. They'll blow it in the playoffs. <laughs> was I wrong? I, exactly what I said was going to happen, yeah. happened. It, it, I said, yeah, they man. haven't been swept all year. They haven't been swept since Adley Rutschman. Came into it's the gonna majors. happen again. They're going to get swept in the first round of the playoffs, and they got swept. It might happen again, but Sorry, they'll but be yeah, in the I, playoffs. I just I can't sit you, let you sit there and smirch. I just can't. I just can't. You're so smug. You're so <laughs> smug. Four yeah. weeks ago, you were talking about. You know what? I might uh, I might jump off of the Red Sox. But now I bought a hat, Orioles. so I changed my <laughs> mind. <laughs> <laughs> I might, I might I become, a hat. I might become I an Orioles a hat, so I changed my mind. That's how much I changed my mind. I bought a hat. Oh, my God. I have missed you guys. <laughs> I got no, it would be bro. fine if you just wanted to sit over there being all smug. Because you know what? You will be back in your place soon, little brother. You will be back Actually, in the basement. Actually, no, no. I don't know. I, don't I think, think you. I think just, you. Hey, if it ever starts going that way, just go buy a hat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure we got the best farm team in the majors. I'm All right. pretty sure. Oh, All right. Are we done with, are we uh, done with the AO? owner? Yeah. Because yeah. Roberts is over here irritating me with his rhetoric. <laughs> you can do it while you can. Kick me while uh, I'm down. It's fine. Go I ahead. Will. I don't care. I right. will. Let's run it down. I will. I will Let's move on to the it. National League. We've got the NL Central. Um, right now, it's back and forth. DraftKings is the only one calling. They've got the Cubs uh, by... Basically, the 185 and the Cardinals at plus 190. So they got the Cubs by just a hair. Every other book Cardinals. Has, has the Cubs over the Cardinals. Every other book has the Cardinals. I mean, they got, a, they got an okay lineup. I like Goldschmidt, but yeah, Goldschmidt's he's getting old. Yeah, he is. I, I mean, but it's just no. I like the Cubs. I, I like the, their pitcher. I, I like Steele as their pitcher. I think he's a good pitcher. I think they got some pieces. Christopher Morale. They've got some good pieces to build around, but I find the NL Central, for the most part, to be very uninspiring. Both Central divisions are very uninspiring. I, I'll be honest with you. I'd kind of like to see where the Reds end up in this. The Reds have some talent, man. They, they've um, got some I remember some uh, Ellie De La Cruz took MLB by storm. He just went uh, premiered and just he had a freaking tear. Well, I and mean, they... just knocking the cover off the baseball, stealing bases. I you know, the Reds have a lot of good young talent too. I like they do. Steer, Steer, McLean. Yeah, they've got they've got some pop in that lineup. If they can get, uh, I think Ashcroft is their ace. If they can, yeah. If they can get some good pitching, not even good, just for that division, like slightly above average with that lineup against those other pitchers. You're you right. Know. The Reds are good. They could end up. I just I can't. I, I well, just can't pick the Reds. You know, they got Ellie De La Cruz. Reds, you know. And he was the hottest thing last year. And if you remember, just the year before, or maybe two years prior, it was Jonathan India. Same thing. Yeah, I mean, he's still over there. I mean, he's he's another great player. He's they have the talent to go. Um, Not sure about the pitching. That and I think that's the only thing that's that really thing holds that... them back. But not. I mean, you look at the Phillies. The Phillies two years ago started that whole thing about do we have to have good pitching? Can we just build a lineup of hitters and? They went deep into the playoffs with a roster of decent pitchers, but great hitters. And I think Cincinnati could kind of have, they could have they the had, same success. They need a couple Aaron more decent. They, Wheeler need, they need a couple more decent more pitchers. Decent picture, pitchers. Ah. Wheeler's got a big extension, I think. Yeah, Wheeler. Wheeler is definitely. Well, let's not more get into the NL East yet. I know Randy is just. Pitcher. I mean, do you just want to jump into? Do you want to do the NL West first and then get to your? Oh, I don't care. I'm like, we can do either one. I'm not biased just because right, I'm a Braves the West fan. First. Let's get him out of the way. It's not like this house lives and breathes Atlanta Braves, dude. I don't mm. – I get you guys no. just calm down a little bit. Um, so you like, the, you like the Cubs, huh? You like the Cubs to take the Central? 
I guess give me the Cubs. Yeah, still with the Cubs. Yeah. Like I said, I Cubs have talent. They have a ton of talent. Uh, I'd like to see if the Reds could do it. I think all three of us kind of agree that I don't know if the Cards really can can take that division. Mm-hmm. Hey. Yeah. Sportsbook say it is, so maybe it's maybe close, that they know more than me. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> But who you got for the NOS? I mean, I think I know who oh, should the be the NOS. But, um, it's chalky, but I'm going with the Dodgers. I just think they're the best team. The NOS is ridiculous. There's there's really it just is, a top tier of teams in the MLB, and they're both in the NL. They, it's the Braves and the Dodgers. They are in a class, I think, in above themselves. There's a there's a a, a short list of very good contenders. I would put the Orioles in that category. Um. And there's the, the teams that are very good, like the Astros. But mm-hmm. I think those two teams are really head and shoulders above everybody else. I agree. Well, but the Dodgers are there every year. Yeah, and it never means anything. So. Well, the yeah. Dodgers to when me, Kershaw and, breaks down. They and, got and their their season is starting with a little bit of turmoil. Yeah, yeah. Well, I will say just from the sports books, DraftKings, the Dodgers are the only three digit team. Yeah, draft games. I mean, they are. You have the Diamondbacks, who just went to the series. Now, don't get me wrong. The Diamondbacks, they were a good team last year. They had a lot of luck on their side. They, yeah, Lady Luck was with them through a lot of a lot they of. Got downs. Sure, it takes through the, the luck yeah. Was yeah, on the Rangers. Absolutely, side. but you had the Diamondbacks. You had the Giants, who they're not a slouch team either. And you still have the Padres, and all of those are plus one thousand teams. And then you've got the Dodgers at minus four fifty. So minus four minus four fifty to to win the division. God damn, that's not worth it at all. Hell no! I know no fives. Absolutely I mean, for no, hundred and sixty two no. get for for you to tie up money that long for for, for that much juice is uh, all fan, minus four sixty five. You'd have to have four, any minus four fifty. And Fanduel has the Dodgers at minus six hundred to win the division. Terrible number. I wouldn't bet that at all. Yeah, yeah. It's it's but very. If you made it any. If, wait a minute. They wait a, can't just give money away. So if you made it anywhere closer to even, yeah, wait, it is like giving. You money. wait until the All Star game. You see if there's anybody who's like the the dime max that they. Well, can by the time you get to the All Star game, it might be minus fifteen hundred. But, yeah. but if it's that, I mean, still you're not putting any. Yeah, you're money not betting on it regardless of minus one hundred. You're only hoping that the Diamondbacks because they you show they've got talent on the team. Corbin Carroll yeah. is a great player, dude. Yeah, I mean he does it all. He's fast. He hits. He's Merrill, good. He's a, Merrill's and a good the, pitcher, man. Yeah, so like, like, um, if they can hold serve, mm-hmm. I'm not saying overtake it, but hold serve with the Dodgers, keep it close around the All Star break, you could get a better number. Padres still have Machado, Bogarts, and Tatis. Yep. Yeah. I, yeah. No Soto left, but that's still a really good lineup. Snell mm-hmm. is gone. Um, you know, their their pitching, their pitching is yeah is suspect, but. Suspect. It's just like if you've got a good know, lineup, they Joe can keep Musgrove you in a game. My fantasy team. <laughs> he's he's yeah. He, I mean, he's at the top. Um, but yeah, I, I do. I think the Dodgers take that division. Yeah, most likely. Um, but the Diamondbacks got a taste last year, so you know they're going to probably still be hungry. They're they, hungry. They, oh, yeah. they want. I don't think there's ever a team before every before the cards hit the table, before the season starts, before spring training's even over. I don't think there's ever a team in baseball who's not hungrier than the team that lost the World Series the year before. It's all, like you've sat all off season and stewed over losing that game or that series rather. They, if nothing else, they're hungry right now. They're probably hungrier than any other team out in their division. Just, but no, the the Diamondbacks. Diamondbacks. Oh, but will they have the talent to carry them the way they did last year? And a thing they have they have, one thing they had on their side last year is. They were a dark horse like no other. They got no a little one. more expectations this season. Exactly, and yeah. there's teams are going to kind of be looking at them a lot. If you're more. a young guy. You don't need to like. Are you putting pressure on yourself to live up to that? So, yeah. Um, we will see. But like I said, if they can hold serve with the Dodgers, they can make that competitive. Yeah. Going down because I mean, like I said, the, that number tells you they're a huge favorite. Yeah. Yeah. So like, if they can keep it close into July and August, I wouldn't look. I would look out for that team, but. If the Dodgers play the way that they're potentially can, and either one of any of those teams really go into a long slump, like mm-hmm. you said, the game is slumps and streaks. If they go into a, a ten, short slump, a, you know, a, like a seven eight game skid, and the Dodgers are hot, they could they could put it out of reach. Really, so I think them and 
it, the AL, uh, the NL East as well. I think the Phillies are good. I just, I don't, I don't in 162 games. I just don't see anyone else but the Braves. Coming out of the They're a complete team, man. So sure, they might. Maybe we get out of April and the the Braves aren't in the lead. But in 162 games, they're good. yeah. I think they're. I think they're. Yeah, I, yeah. I think they're a good team. But their lineup is. You, you know they've got the pitching. You know they got the pitching. They've. Um, if that lineup can just kind of pick up where they left off last year. I mean, Ozuna has the same season as last year, and Ozuna so far is uh, he's he's hitting amazingly in the spring training. I know we've talked about it. You can only go off of that so much. Sorry, I'm like getting blown up over here. No, you're good, man. Um, keep going. Don't wait for me. No, I, I feel like all eyes are on me. I'm like no, trying to get to. Oh, oh man. Here, um, I'm, I'm still stupid. <laughs> No, it's just dumb. It's You'll just be okay. A, no, I know I'll be fine. You'll be back in the basement soon enough, and we'll be back on top like we usually are. So. Yeah. You were there under gear. <laughs> <laughs> How many World Series have you won this century? In the last hundred years or this century? This century. Okay, yeah, zero. You had to really <laughs> word that in a, a certain way, didn't yeah, you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Ozuna, that you know, the it's talks of hundred years, we might be over you. <laughs> <laughs> Ozuna, uh... I'll never switch again. <laughs> I don't want Ozuna, to they again. talked in the, do. they no. talked in spring training about moving Ozuna to giving him a backup role behind Matt Olson. Matt Olson played all season last year. There was some talks that you know, 162 games. He slumped at the end, got ice cold like we were talking about. They were like, you know, maybe give him another guy back there that he gets a little extra break here and there, stay a little fresher through the season. I haven't really seen Ozuna do anything. I don't even know if they've played him at first so far in the spring in spring uh, training. I watched him take practice reps at first, and he looked sharp, you know, but you're not – you don't have a, a professional dude who's trying to actually score – uh, in a game, hitting against you, you've got a coach that's, you know, knocking some easy ones at you to see how you react. So you can't really put a lot into that. But his hitting so far in spring training was has been stellar. He leads the team uh, in batting average right now in spring training. Um, I've got the Braves right now. DraftKings they've got the Braves at minus two forty mm. to win the to win the division, followed obviously by the Phillies. Um, Phillies plus. Uh, Phillies are plus plus three ten. Re- plus three ten. Yeah. Um. And then you've got the Mets third at twelve hundred. My thing is, I think the Mar. Personally, I think the Mar- That's crazy to me. I think the Marlins, even though both teams are kind of, eh, the Mets offloaded a ton. They they have offloaded a ton in the last couple of yeah, years. The Marlins don't have it. Huh? The Marlins don't, but the Marlins have young talent. Um. And they still have, they have a couple good pitchers. Yeah, I just think I like I like Ares at the top of the lineup for the Marlins. He's a hitting machine. All he does is just get on base. The Mets yeah. still have talent. They they do. I mean, you got you got the polar bear. You got. I mean, you've got the Vogelbach still plays for them too. I think. Yeah, but I, he wasn't one I was putting in the talent. But I mean, he <laughs> but he's a talented <laughs> DH though. I mean, like. He is a talented DH in my book. Like, Vogelbach, I hated seeing us play him, especially at the end of the season. I hate seeing us play him and watch Vogelbach come to the plate because I'm like, this dude is going to hit a fucking home run and go eat two cheeseburgers in the dugout. He just looks like that. Sloppy, dude. Um, He's so sloppy. (laughs) Diaz is coming back. Um, I think they're still solid. I don't think they're in any shape to win. Who was that guy the Red Sox brought in? Uh... That played for the Giants. He was a third baseman. Big dude. He got super fat. 
Oh, was, the panda bear. Yeah, panda bear. Oh, what was his name? Pablo, Pablo Sandoval. Sandoval. Pablo Sandoval. I remember. He I was, love Pablo he Sandoval. He was trying to take a home run cut and he burst his belt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for the Vogelbach to do that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh man, but yeah. So you got the Braves at minus two forty from DraftKings. Um, bottom of the barrel, obviously, is the Nationals. You got the Nationals that are going off at plus ten thousand, and pretty much all of them. They. I feel like they've given up talent and have never tried to fill those the talent that they've lost. Um, we went la- when we went last year to watch him play. Uh, what's his name? Uh, C.J. Abrams. He was a good player. Uh, he was impressive to watch. He's about some of the most talented that they have in Washington oh, right for now. Sure. Though, like um, the guy Lane. What's his last name? Lane. He's he's, he's got a little pop outfielder for them, but they don't have like. No. No. <clears throat> and I just I think with with that division, those top three teams can, can do it. The Mets I don't think they have the talent to do it, but they're still it's the Mets. It's Exactly, which means they can't do it. No, yeah. I don't see anyone else I, in that division. It's either the the Braves or the Phillies. I think the Mets all that they do at this point, I'm not saying they can take the division. I said but they give headaches to everyone trying. Like, they're that team that is, like, they shouldn't be beating you, but somehow they still bring it. I mean, they fight every game. I'll give them that. Like, Lucky. Lucky. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe it's a New York thing. <sighs> so. <laughs> well, that's what I've got. So, you know, preseason's always fun because everything that we just went through in a month might be complete shit. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you, like y'all said, y'all said it. Starts Thursday. But then two months after that, it could be right back in good. it. Yeah, right back in it. So, um, like you guys were saying, though, it's like you can't win. You can't win the the whole thing in, in April. No, you can't. You cannot. You can lose it, though. But you can lose it. So, um, like the A's are going to do. The A's. Oh yeah. No, no. Or and the, the Red Sox. Well, let's go off of one more. Let's see. uh, One more little fun fun tidbit on here. I just wanted to to throw this out here. This is at Fox Bet. These are... Let me make sure that this is current. No, this is not current. I was like, wait a minute. That's not right. All right, let's see. As of right now, <clears throat> number one team picked the World Series preseason World Series winner odds. <clears throat> LA. I wouldn't take the bet just because they never do. Yeah, and that's no. Yeah, you've got LA at plus three seventy five. Um, to to win the whole thing. That's pretty standard across the board it looks like through all all sports books you've got the Dodgers uh, picked at plus 375 you got the Braves plus 550 Astros going off at plus 7 7 hundo got the Yanks at plus 1000 this is all through uh, bet 365 on these Um, you've got the Orioles through FanDuel going off at plus 1400 for a World Series? For a World Series. Oh, worth a That's worth a fiver. That's worth a fiver, man. That's worth a fiver. That's definitely worth a fiver. Um, you got the Rangers going off through Bet365. They're going off at Don't. plus 1,100. <laughs> Don't. Um, I know what you're going to do. Don't. And Don't. they're they're Randy, also... What? Randy, don't read it out. What? You know. Don't read it out. What? Don't leave it. Red Sox. <laughs> <laughs> We're we're not even close to that part of the list yet, Robert. <laughs> Sorry, Brian. no, I knew that. No, I know hey, him. I but listen, look at his eye. But listen, he was leaning up to the microphone. Exactly what he was going to say. But listen, you were talking about like the Rangers. Rangers also at FanDuel going off at plus fourteen hundred odds, worth a fiver. Worth a fiver. I mean, um, I, I I think the AL is not with back to back. I think that the field in the AL is a lot more wide open than yeah. the NL. The NL is two teams, right? So it's like. Which one of these AL teams do you think could beat one of these game one of these teams in a seven game playoff? 
<laughs> is, is basically what you're thinking about. And I think the Orioles have just enough pitching and a hell of a lineup to do it. Uh, the Rangers have just enough pitching, like you say, if Goldie and they DeGrom have... and can pitch but well. But DeGrom, I don't, he's not going to be pitching. You know that. He's not. And like, I'm just saying, like, <laughs> there's, if a good lineup can win you if you're hot mm-hmm. in October. So the teams with, that have a potent enough lineup that if those guys get hot, just like Atlanta, even though they didn't do it, yeah, if that team is just on a tear, one through nine, they're going to just batter your pitching around. It doesn't, not like I say it doesn't matter, but they will take good pitching and make it look bad because yeah. they're just on such a tear. So you got to think about the teams in the AL that have enough talent in that lineup to do it. And I think the Orioles can do it. I think the Rangers can do it. And, well, barf bag Yankees could do it if they really, you know, just come alive. Because playing in New York with that short porch, Judge Soto, and, Soto. Yeah. and Stanton and uh, Garrett Cole, if he's pitching well, they've got guys. They've, but, yeah. Well, they have uh, right now Diamondbacks do FanDuel plus 4,000. <sighs> to win it, uh, to make it, I would maybe take I would maybe take a fiver on make it if they, if they can because we talked about the Dodgers choking and someone else is going to maybe take care of the Braves. Yeah. You know, but uh, you're yeah, right. They got they had a little little sprinkle of fairy dust last postseason. Uh, here's a little fairy dust for you. Right now, according to uh, according to FanDuel, the Red Sox are better picks to win it all than the Guardians, Tigers, Brewers, Marlins, Royals, Angels, Pirates, Nats, White Sox, Rockies, and A's. It's like half the league, bro. We're in the bottom I told 12. you I'd make your night better. We're in the bottom 12. <laughs> We're like the 18th best team. Let's go. <laughs> right now, Red Sox going off through FanDuel. We'll go, we'll go through FanDuel. Plus six thousand to win the whole thing. I'm sorry, Brent. Not worth a fiver. It is not worth a fiver. <laughs> fiver. Well, that being said, uh, the season yeah officially really starts kicking off. What Thursday? Thursday. Um, we got a full day of baseball. Started last week. Yeah, it technically started technically. last week in Seoul, Korea. I'm up on fantasy baseball already. Negative twelve to zero. <laughs> oh yep. I'm up fifteen to nine over Colby. I'm up nineteen. Coming nine. for you, Colby. Um. Thank you, Yamamoto. <laughs> well, that being said, so the Dodgers are the number one pick. They have the best odds to win the whole thing, which is funny that we're talking about a lot of betting, you know, March Madness, and you got a lot of baseball going on. And it's just ironic that the Dodgers are Vegas odds, the highest one to win, because apparently there was a former employee of the Dodgers who really enjoyed odds as well that we're finding out about this oh, week. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um going to go ahead and, and just roll right into it because right now it is to me and to a lot of people it seems like it probably is the biggest story in Major League Baseball right now only because nothing has been proven one way or the other but Shohei Otani uh, the interpreter slash good friend of his slash handler like what we were talking about like this guy, uh, $4.5 million in bets that now they're saying was stolen from o- Otani right. yeah. through wire transfers and all this. Um, as a, It's it's hard to look at because we're not pro athletes and we're not millionaires. So to me, I hear $4.5 million and I'm like, how in the absolute hell do you not see $4.5 million just vanish? But when you sign... You're kind of guy who signs a seven hundred million dollar contract, and you get endorsements up to like sixty million a year. It's a drop in the bucket, sucker. <laughs> I, I guess um, I am ready to unpack this. I Thoughts? Really, yeah. Let's, no, let's hold do on. it. Can we take a two minute intermission? Right. Two minute intermission, please. Is it a Coors intermission? Is it a is it a Bush intermission? It's Coors. It's Coors. sponsored by Coors Light. We are not sponsored by Coors Light, people. Just so you know, that's a joke. <laughs> no. <laughs> My intermission is, though. <laughs> yes, we'll take an intermission. All right, because I really want to unpack this. I have some thoughts. I was eager to jump on it when we got started. I'm biding my time. I'm ready. Right. I need a fresh mind. So go. All right, I'm we'll going. Fine. I'm... All right. Uh, sorry, Brett. No. All right. <laughs> We're good. Silver 
silver bullet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, then I think is what we're going to finish this up with tonight. We're going to we're going to roll through this topic. I'm sorry. I, you got to take these away from me, dude. Like, dude stop. I'm just I like said I would take some home. Here, I'm like put them this way so at least I'm like no. This one's empty, Randy. Why? Huh? This one is empty. Why? I actually the one the pieces I took out of that were tiny little pieces. I left the the one whole one in there. Uh, all right. Um, we'll get on it. What, Otani? Yeah. Like, okay. So, there's a lot to unpack here. Um, I think the MLB might have a really big problem when it comes, like, possibly. They could have full-on Pete Rose type of situation with arguably the face of the league. One of the top three guys mm -hmm. involved in something where you could be led to believe that he threw games intentionally. Um, there was, on Twitter, I saw there was a a bet for a million dollars, which is a lot of money, right? Yeah. <laughs> but for if they're saying that his interpreter, who makes way less than that in a year, I think they said he makes 200 grand, 250 grand, something like that a year as being... Otani's interpreter, would not have $1 million to bet, right? So it gets made to his home, to a bookie in his hometown of Japan, offshore. And it was, they were playing the Braves, and they were supposed to, uh, the run line for the Braves was minus three and a half, which is a, a number that's been boofed up, like normally the run line's one and a half. So you're b bumping it up to three and a half, plus... Uh, I think the Braves over four and a half runs. Mm -hmm. Something along those. Well, just so happens, Otani was pitching that night, and he had a bad game on the mound, and he had a bad game on the plate. Um, whether you want to connect the dots there and say he was throwing games, I don't know. But there's there's what just little breadcrumbs sprinkled around this thing that lead me to believe that. You know, hit, I mean, you know what it could be. He was going against the best team in the league. That night. Could be, <laughs> could be, but I just, I, it, it strikes and me hey. Just, uh, <laughs> I know, but the, but the amount of money wagered is sure. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as the interpreter not making that much money, the interpreter he has been quoted as saying in other, like last year, interpreting is a fraction of his job. He was basically Shohei's handler. He did everything for Shohei. He controlled everything for Shohei. That included access to his money. There you go. I mean, it, it, so there's there's plausible deniability, and uh, there is. I, I don't think that he really had it. Like everything that he says seems very plausible, right? And I think that's probably. I, and also, he says that this money was stolen, and it was doing. You don't say that if you're lying, because a forensic accounting can find these things. Mm -hmm. They can figure out yeah. what happened to money, how it was... This can be deciphered, whether or not he was stolen from, or whether or not he was. Well, so here's my one of the things that I kind of thought was interesting. And, I, you know, I got to look into where the, where where it was all coming from. The initial reports, and the initial reports were coming from high-end places like ESPN and, uh, I'm trying to think who else, I think it was Fox Sports ESPN that I saw it initially, that the first report came out and was said that Shoei had given the interpreter money to pay off bets that the interpreter had that were outstanding for him. And yeah. they were saying, so the problem with that is, you can't, I can't just give you a million bucks. It has to be, it's got to be, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, documented. It's got to be documented. You're going to have to pay some money on that million bucks. You can't just give a million bucks away. And they were saying he, he that he gave him the 4.5 to pay off bets and stuff that he had. And then I, it was like 48 hours later, the reports completely changed and was, no, he stole the money. Nothing was given, and it was like, so what happened in that 48 hours? Well, see, was it just a false report, or? And that's why, like, when you first messaged me about it, I don't know. It's too early yeah. to get into anything, because 
the stories that we are going to get, they're preliminary stories. Yeah. We don't know, like, we don't know how much of these stories is true. We don't know what's true. We don't know what is. Anything. Yeah. We're going like. Yeah. And if you, sorry, go ahead, Randy. No, no, go ahead. No, but like, if you zoom out, I think the bigger problem is just. Otani being involved in any kind of this at any rate is just a bad look for MLB. Right. That's a sucks. league that's already kind of struggling with getting their fan getting fans to watch the game mm-hmm. um because they can't market it right. I you know, that's a whole other discussion. But Well, and we've said it numerous times, being the poster child for the league right now, it looks guy. terrible on him no whether he was involved or not. It's like you you gotta know if you're that high profile of a player. You almost need your friends to be as clean as you. I almost think if MLB had the evidence that said clear as day, Otani was doing this, they pro- they because he's so ho- high profile, they mm-hmm. would sweep it under the rug and say, "Okay, Mister Interpreter, you're going to take the dive. You're going to take the fall for this." But would they? No, they definitely would. They covered up steroids for years. That's true. <laughs> of course they would. But <laughs> who were the biggest stars of that time? Yeah, Mark McGuire, Sammy, Sammy Sosa. Sosa. But, uh, who you got punished in those situ- Who got punished after the federal government intervened? Right. But it, it, but it, the, the federal government. This is a federal thing. The federal mm-hmm. government but, will get involved with this. So if something, if Otani is guilty of something, something will happen to him. Uh, it, if, it, but it, MLB is doing the investigation right now. If that's the only thing that happens, and MLB is. But this itself. involves millions of dollars of gambling. Yeah, the federal, it, the, it is, they will get involved. Well, and if I, they got involved with steroids, they're going to get involved when millions of dollar gambling money is involved. Well, and I think this opens the door to a, a huge issue that we all like gambling on sports. Every one of us in here has bet on sports plenty of times. I don't know if yes. I like it. But <laughs> yeah, it's not pleasurable. I like it. I like it when the number goes up in my in my account, not yeah. down. But yeah. it, we've talked about it a little bit. It really opens the door to, okay, you're you're damning the players because yes, you can't bet. Especially you can't bet on a damn sport that you play in. That's terrible. Well, but, in my opinion, that's the only thing you can't bet on. Yeah, I don't get these rules that you can't bet on other sports, and, but that's and I agree. I a hundred percent agree with you. I a hundred percent agree with you. If it's not a sport you can affect, then what does it matter? Right. But my problem is, is like we talked about earlier, everything in sports right now, tonight on Sports Center, brought to you by DraftKings. In our, uh, what were you saying um, tonight? Here's our DraftKings analyst, brought to you by ESPN Bet, in our River Bet Studio. Exactly. I'm like, and how could Otani gamble on the sport? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. And I think that it's like you have to, you got to figure out a direction with this stuff. You can't just open the doors and be like, man, we love betting. We absolutely love betting. As long as you don't play in our league. Exactly. I, I think not betting on yourself is probably a good place to start. If Otani's with the NBA, they got the NBA the center, they got some backup jabroni center. For, I don't know which team, but he was betting on himself for prop bets, and they found out in basketball. Yes. Yeah, he, well, he was betting the unders, he was betting the unders because he's a backup. He doesn't get any minutes, and the minutes that he got, if he got a shot, he would just brick it. Yeah, and end up you know with one or two. his so case. Me... All the information that came out seems pretty obvious. That <laughs> yeah. This guy was pretty involved. This so Otani, not. Let obvious. me ask you this then. So. You can't bet we all need on that the, Chris Carter fall guy, right? You you can't bet on a sport that you can affect. But so, what if you know? Does not that it makes it any better? But what's your thoughts on say? And I, you know, I'm the the name is going to get dropped in this. What's your thoughts on like a guy like Pete Rose, who never once bet against himself? Yeah, he placed bets on himself that he affected. But he did the work. He had to do what he had to work his ass off. Yeah, but I've seen the the discrepancy was like, oh, he never bet against his team or something. Yeah, but he didn't bet on his team every day. So if you're bet, true. If somebody is looking at your bets and they're only looking at the days that you're betting on your team, you're there's something to that. Well, yeah, and but that I can mean, change things that can change. But your bets are going to be different if the O's are playing the A's versus if the O's are playing the Yankees. 
Right. And so, I'm like, again, I'm not saying whether it's right or wrong, but I'm like, I understand that. I don't want whether I, I can do good or my team can do good or I can bring it and try to make these things happen to make a little extra money on the side. The bets are going to change if I'm playing the toughest team in the league versus the weakest team. Obviously. I don't think there's any difference with Pete Rose. If, it's, if Otani did gamble, there's no difference with Pete Rose and Otani. Whether uh, that would just it's be the same. Route. Oh, it would, that, it, be. That would, it would shake the Major League Baseball. It would shake it to its core. If they found out that he had done something along those lines, I think I guess I'd, for some people, huh? I guess for some people, wouldn't affect me. Does it? In does it not? In, in, does it not change the integrity of the game? Exactly. That's does it? Not, it's America's it pastime. Shake, we're does talking it shake about your confidence like, in the integrity of the game because. Otani, no, not really, because if Otani's getting caught, if, if the ups what, don't what, what other <laughs> utility guy on the Brewers or some random teams betting? On, well, like, the way I look at it is, if Otani is getting caught and he's getting in trouble, that means they'll go after anybody. So that's true. That's a good way to look at it. I mean, what I'm saying is, this could open up a whole box of stuff. And if you've got guys in your league, like, I mean, it just could be bad. Well, if I'm not mistaken, what I read, uh, and this wasn't from an official source, but I believe it was the Dodgers are who found out about it first. They are who found out about it, and they were like, so here's the thing. If Otani stays with the Angels, do they ever find out about this? Maybe, maybe not. Well, I don't know, because I don't, don't know how exactly they found out. Or yeah, that, that so. I don't I don't think that information too has much truly information. come to like, light. We, don't, we know nothing. We we know nothing, John. But isn't it more fun yeah. to wildly speculate? <laughs> nice little shout out there. I like it. <laughs> isn't it more fun to wildly speculate, though? Well, I guess we're on a podcast. A of course, of it is. <laughs> <laughs> <That's the thing>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course. But yeah, I mean, it's. I like Otani. I think we've all talked about it. I like Shohei. I think that he brings. Up until this point, he brought almost a fresh innocence to the game. To be an all-star player, an MVP, who seemingly could do it all. Last year, him getting injured and having surgery almost brought him back down to where people yeah. are like, now, now he's human again. We can almost, like, we can almost feel closer to the guy even on that level because he's not a robot who can just do everything. He's still a guy, and then I, I like him through everything, and I hope that is innocent. I hope that it, and if, if nothing does happen, I hope it truly was found, and that it isn't something that gets swept under the rug. I, I do don't. like him. I don't know about innocent. Like, it brings innocence to the thing. I think what you're, I think what it is that he has is this mysteriousness, because we don't know anything about him, because he doesn't talk, because we don't we don't know him. Yeah. So we, we kind of look at it as like, like because we don't hear him, and the, like the, he doesn't it comes off maybe as innocence or like. Well, I've watched a, I've watched a couple of interviews with him, um, you know, out off and off field also, stuff, and it, it's only really I'm going off of what he's saying and what they're portraying. So I mean, it could be total what bullshit. The interpreter is telling you he's saying. True. True. <laughs> you don't know that's what he said. <laughs> Otani could have been saying, "This motherfucker next to me has been taking my money. He has me held captive." <laughs> And then this guy's like, it's a great day on the field. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I'm really glad I could hit home runs. And he team. could have been telling us this whole time. <laughs> right? And we don't know. Oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> I am in trouble. Please help. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, like the guy who blinked more we than just tell. We just... <laughs> well, one of, the only other thing Torture. I saw about it was... Was and I, I guess you can't, you can't really you can't really put a lot into it. But was the article talking about you know it was this, it was actually the same article I was reading about uh, him initially coming out and saying I gave him the money and then coming back later and being like no 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 the money was stolen. In that article they talked about that could have been lost in translation and it very well could have. But the yeah. same article they talked about. They were on the field, pictures clear as day, like laughing, hanging out, joking around with each other less than an hour before the Dodgers fired him. And they're like, 
they both know what's going on. It's not like they dropped this bombshell two minutes before they fired him. They both knew what was going on. And now they're saying, well, this guy, Shoei, came out and said he stole the money from me. That means he knew he stole the money from him right there. How are you standing out there on the field laughing around and joking around with the guy that stole very well stole $4.5 million, $5 million yeah. from you and put you in a predicament that puts a damning light on you in all of baseball right now, at least until your innocence is proven. <sighs> yeah, like Robert's saying, we're just going to have to wait for all the stuff to come out, but it's just such a bad I look. I don't want to wait. I want it now. <laughs> it's such a bad look. Dude. It's just a bad look. Yeah. Hopefully, once they get the game started, that will just kind of go away. I, it probably and will. Sorry, this, guy, this guy, <laughs> will, this guy, will, this uh, interpreter will be disappeared, and he will just be gone. Paid off, probably. He's already. Yeah, it just in the midst. Like, it was the interpreter, and they're like, "Oh, can we reach the interpreter for comment?" It's <laughs> Los Angeles. They're not going to pay him to be quiet. They're going to pay somebody to keep him quiet. Yeah, exactly. Wink, wink. <laughs> so they will disappear him. <laughs> he will go away. And we'll be just like, you "Can't be having this." <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, well, again, I hope the best for Otani. I, I enjoy watching him play. I think he, he brings a lot of excitement to the game. Um, we'll have to wait and see what happens. It'll be but it's interesting. It's all just a distraction. To the, I'm just ready for the games to start now. Absolutely. I'm just ready for the games to start. Absolutely. I'm just ready to see the Braves do better in the season than they did in the spring training because we, we have not looked like those I'll, I'll be optimistic for as long training. as I can because it's only going to be like a month. <laughs> Red Sox win their... How many games are going to watch? How many games? I mean, if it's on the S-Pen, I'll we'll watch it. Red Sox win opening their opening game. Brent's like, let's Look go. At the hat. <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> that is undefeated. I bet he watches more Orioles games than Red Sox. It be it will be a. It will, no, I actually no, no, it won't. <laughs> Unless the Red Sox are playing the Orioles, then that doesn't count. Oh, but they'll be a better baseball team. They'll be a better brand of baseball to watch if I really just want to watch some good baseball. The Orioles are objectively I, better than the Red Sox this year. There, I said it, but it makes me want to vomit. I'll tell you what I'm excited for. I don't think it makes me want to I'm excited for June in I Baltimore. Am excited for June. This trip is going to be fun. It is going to be fun. Mm-hmm. Should be good. Huh? It should be good. I would think so. I'm excited to add another another stadium to the list. Camden Yards is um, awesome. Awesome. City of Baltimore, pretty good for the most part. Shout out City of Baltimore going through yes. it today. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's uh, a good point. Yeah, with the bridge collapse. Uh, hope everybody up there is uh, is well and yeah. And, prayers uh, for everybody involved. Prayers that yeah that man. that sucked. That sucked. So City of Baltimore going through it. Um, yeah. Third largest continuous trust bridge in the world. I as a I used to work up there. I, I drive a truck professionally, um, deep behind the curtain. That's what I do for a living when I'm not podcasting. Uh, I when I lived up there, I drove over that bridge probably three times a week. Yeah. Um, if I was in my work truck with thousands of gallons of oil strapped behind me, plummeting into the Patapsco River below me, that's scary as hell. Yeah. It's, it's, you so, probably wouldn't have been there at one thirty in the morning. Right? No, not at one thirty in the morning, but it's just. I know, yeah. It's just sure. that that is a major thoroughfare. Like, so many people drive over that bridge, and it is just tragic. Somebody, somebody I work with today said it perfectly. They were like, that is like a Final Destination nightmare. Like, that it truly is. And I couldn't, like, I can't imagine. And, again, just nothing but prayers for everybody involved up there. And, you know, just, just hoping that everything goes the best that it possibly can. Just a terrible situation. Yeah, um, it was awful. <clears throat> And now we're going to need to do these reviews because I hate to, I hate to end things on a somber note like that. So we're going to end it on a sweet note. We're going to end it on a sweet note. I'm exactly. giving them. I mean, they're all great. Well, they're then all just like, pick your favorite. They're yeah, all yeah. Nines they're all tens. like nines. My favorite was the uh, what's the snigger one? Nutty bites. Nutty bites. Nutty bites. Nutty bites for Robert. Yep, that's my favorite. There you go. Um. So I told you guys I had a favorite because you know, research purposes, uh-huh. obviously. I've changed my pick. Oh, um, after thoroughly examining all the evidence, um, go nuts. Yep, 
Coco Duds were my favorite out of all of them. Um, I think it was the right combination of caramel, chocolate, crunchiness, texture, uh, just really good. Another round of delicious snacks from Rob over there at Big Daddy Munchies. I like, like we said, Easter's, please, yes, get them for yourself, get them for your kids. They're really freaking good. Go to his website, and uh, boy, uh, impressed. I'm uh, going to have a round of Big Daddy Munchies. I'm going to have to say, uh, I've got, because I, I get stuck to the old school thing, man. i got to give it a number. I'm saying, I got the caramel bombs. I'm not a big caramel M&M fan, and I think that's the only thing that holds me back. I love M&M's, plain M&M's. I've had caramel a few times. It's something about the caramel that they have in there is really good, but I'm just, I think it's because I'm not a huge caramel fan. Still giving those 7.5. 100% satisfied okay. uh, because you have to try those. I'm I'm glad I did because those are 100% better oh, no, than a I mean, caramel M&M. I was, M &M. I, like, I was still munching on with yeah, like, I mean, yeah. I, you saw me on camera sitting there still eating them. Um, the Nutty Bites, same thing. Snickers, probably not my favorite candy bar. Great, though. I'm still going the eight. Char the Charleston eight. Bites are still very good. Yeah, eight with the Nutty Bites. Charleston Chews, chocolate Charleston Chews with the chocolate over them. Those are my favorites. I'd love to try something like that. These right here, it's almost like perfect order. I've got seven five. I've got eight for the nutty bites. I've got eight five for the Charleston bites. The cookie bites and the cocoa duds are nine and a halfs. They're mm. both nine and a halfs. The tubs right here, both the tubs, nine and a halfs for me. There is not a single thing that we've gotten from Rob so far that again I would not keep in my cabinet to have on hand at all times. Even yeah. the caramel bombs. No, no they're great very stuff. good. It, it's, it is it, great stuff. It's slamming and. Uh, you said it perfectly. Uh, Easter is is close close approaching, but there's yeah. still time, people. Yeah, and if you, if you're not already, just go hit him up on Facebook. You follow him. He'll he'll post and say, "Oh, I'm at the farmers market." Yes. Yeah, I'm at the. You know, I'm going to be at this place today, and you can swing down there and, and get him just in time for Easter. So yep. you know, hit him up Let on him Facebook. Sports bites sent you. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, yeah tell him sports bites sent you. And also, if you are going to go buy some Big Daddy Munchies. Just go hit subscribe on our channel, too, while you're there. If you're watching this video right now, go hit like, go hit subscribe, and then, you know, go meet up with Big Daddy Munchies and Robin. That's a great stuff. idea. And on top of that, when you do go get your Big Daddy's Munchies, leave in the comments which one you got, why you got it, which one's your favorite so far. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Rob, again. Appreciate Rob, you, man. Appreciate you it. You have been absolutely amazing, man. Thank you so much. Rob at Big Daddy's Munchies, Big Daddy Munchies, Big Daddy's Munchies uh, Again, website right here. Go check him out. He's got a ton of great stuff. You can't go wrong with Big Daddy's Munchies. Uh, best freeze dried candy I've tried, hands down, bar none, across the boards. Again, we just can't thank Rob's enough for for being a part of this with us. Uh, thank you so much, Brent. Thank you, Director of Snack Content. Thanks yeah, for, for taking always. care of it and, and staying staying with, with the munchies coming in. Robert, thank you so much. Great time. Love the insight. <laughs> always you love know, the sure insight. You, too, <laughs> you are so, you're going back to the basement so fast. It's all going to crumble in front of you. Oh. I can't wait. And oh. you'll be back down in the basement where you belong. Yeah. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so yeah. much for being a part but of this. Until then. <laughs> We've. We truly missed you last week, so we're glad to be back. Thank you all so much for being a part of this. We do this for you. We love you guys. Thank you so much. Can't say it enough. Hit that like. Hit that subscribe. Leave some comments. Give us some Give us some feedback on everything. We love to hear from y'all. Uh, anything, really. We, we say it all the time. Like, leave comments on whatever you want to hear, you want to see. It's your mom's birthday next week. Leave a comment. Maybe we'll give her a shout-out. You just never know. And we are still trying to build that subscription number. We're, 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 we're dwindling a little bit, so we need to get a little boost in that. So, we want to get to that 250 subscriber number so we can go ahead and push this next giveaway out of here. we got a great giveaway on deck waiting to go. And with that, thank you again one last time so much for everybody watching. We are Sports Bites. We are your self-proclaimed number one sports podcast, bringing you the best of both worlds. Sports. Thank you guys so much. Y'all have a great night. Long as I wake up in the morning, I'ma get a bag. Get a bag, yeah, I'ma get a bag. Long as I wake up in the morning, I'ma get a bag. Get a bag, yeah, I'ma get a bag.